Next on NBC Connecticut Today at 4.30, mourning the loss of a Hartford police officer killed in the line of duty. A memorial growing outside the Hartford police headquarters for 34-year-old Robert Bobby Garden, as well as a second officer who remains in the hospital. We've got live team coverage this morning. Plus, new details about a state trooper in Groton heard in a crash that tied up traffic last night for hours, how he's doing this morning, and what police say happened here. Our temperatures again in the 90s today. Kids across the state going to be sitting home early once again. Yeah, not as hot as yesterday, but yesterday was record breaking across the state. We'll talk about heat and humidity and how the heat kind of uh, diminishes this weekend. But we have a storm chance and we got to look at lead too. And that is a look at some of your top news and weather on your Friday morning. NBC Connecticut today at 430 is next. Connecticut's most accurate forecast, certified by Weather Rain. All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for getting up with us, by the way, because it's wicked early. <laughs> wicked early or really late night. Uh, this is a satellite imagery of Hurricane Lee. Lee is pretty much a monster hurricane. In my brain, I'm trying to think of times that I've seen a more powerful one in the Atlantic. Hugo comes to mind. Uh, Andrew comes to mind, actually. Um, but right now, it's impacting no humans. It's thrown some big waves at all the islands uh, in the Caribbean, the, you know, the Leeward Islands, the Windward Islands, and the Virgin Islands. And it's Category 5. Now, a couple of things that jump out at you. Barometric pressure, 926, creating winds around the center, sustained at 165. Nope, doesn't happen often. Now, as this thing moves, it will continue to throw a lot of wave action toward the Caribbean and eventually toward the eastern United States. Waves, that is. Now, the Hurricane Center is holding on to some intensification continuing this morning. It doesn't, the, the eye is kind of collapsing just a little bit, but look, it, there's a slow weakening, but we're talking about a five, still a five, still a five through the weekend, and then becoming a four over time. That's a major hurricane. So let's track its potential here as far as uh, we call this the spaghetti plot for obvious re <laughs> excuse me, reasons. We can see the consensus is still to take it up uh, near Bermuda or just inside of Bermuda and away from the east coast of the United States. There's a couple outliers that are a little too close for comfort. Uh, so we'll be watching it for sure. Temperatures in the 60s and lower 70s right now. It's murky, muggy, and there's some patchy fog out there and a little bit of low cloudiness. We'll see partly sunny skies today. We'll watch out for a few storms, mainly in western Connecticut. Shannon. All right, Bob. Thanks to the latest this morning. A young man is being hailed a hero for rescuing a child from a hot car in Bridgeport. Police got a call Wednesday afternoon about a young child locked in a car in the parking lot of the Bass Pro Shops. Now, that caller told officers the child was banging on the window for help. 18-year-old Alex Torres did not wait for officers to get there. He took action, busting out the window with his arm. I just, one time, boom, and then it shattered. The kid is out of the car, and everybody's good. My first instinct was just, I wouldn't want my kid to go through that. I just would not want to see any kid to go through that. Well, police arrested the driver of the car. The child was taken to the hospital as a precaution. All right, your time now, 445 still to come. Connecticut's primary day just around the corner. Hear what Democratic candidates running for Hartford mayor had to say in last night's debate. Plus, tight passages in water-filled caverns. An American scientist stranded more than 3,000 feet down a cave in Turkey. The intense rescue mission now to bring him to safety. Well, Connecticut's primary day is just around the corner, and last night, people in Hartford heard from the Democratic candidates for mayor. Eric Coleman, State Senator John Fonfara, and Arunan Aralambalam took part in this debate. They took on issues like housing, public safety, and violence. And it is our obligation as a city to focus on our poverty, and so much of what we're experiencing in the city of crime uh, is related to that. I believe there needs to be a partnership between police officers and the communities that they protect and serve. Uh, that's so important in building trust. I'm gonna create an Office of Violence Prevention to, to coordinate resources between our nonprofits, our police, and our schools. I'm gonna have cops walking a beat again, building relationships in the community. Eric Coleman.
Okay, that Connecticut's mm -hmm. primary is next Tuesday. Current Mayor Luke Bronin is not running for re-election for the state. Switching gears now to an urgent rescue mission being watched around the world. An American scientist stranded more than 3,000 feet down a cave in Turkey. This morning, the race is on to safely return him to the surface. Matt Bradley is in Turkey with the latest details. The dramatic first video of American scientist Mark Dickey days after a life-threatening medical emergency trapped him 3,400 feet underground in Turkey. I'm doing well. Thank you. Visibly tired but in good spirits, surrounded by the international rescue team that gave him life-saving medical care. Um, as you can see, I'm up, I'm alert, I'm talking, uh, but I'm not healed on the inside yet, so I need a, a lot of help to get out of here. The 40-year-old veteran cave diver experienced severe gastrointestinal bleeding on Saturday while working on a caving expedition in southern Turkey. The medical emergency leaving him unable to eat and partially unconscious for three days until two doctors delivered units of blood and administered transfusions, according to the Italian cave and Alpine service. Reaching depths of over 4,000 feet, the Morka Cave is Turkey's third deepest, a labyrinth of tight passages and water-filled caverns, which Carl Hetmeyer, a fellow cave diver and friend of Dickey's, says makes the cave one of the world's toughest to traverse. It's at the top of the game of difficult cave systems. I don't expect Mark on the surface for, for four to eight days. His rescuer is now facing a monumental journey back to the surface. We take care of our own, um, and it's really special be taken care of. Well, Matt Bradley goes on to report how long this takes. All depends on whether Dickey will be able to leave the cave on his own. If he needs to be carried out on a stretcher, that will make the rescue much longer and much more difficult. Last night's U.S. Open semifinals match between Coco Goff and Carolina Muchava had to be put on pause because of environmental protesters. Newly released video shows the four protesters in the Arthur Ashe Stadium chanting, end fossil fuels delaying that match by almost an hour. Take a listen here. One of the protesters even glued his bare feet to the concrete floor. You can see security guards and police officers eventually stepping in, escorting the protesters out of the stadium. Goff would go on to win the match, advancing to her first U.S. Open final. It's so a wild start to the football season. The Detroit Lions upsetting the defending Super Bowl champs in the Kansas City Chiefs. You saw it right here on NBC Connecticut without their star tight end, Travis Kelsey. The Chiefs wide receivers struggled to pick up the pieces. Lions running back David Montgomery scored the go-ahead touchdown with just over seven minutes left to give the Lions a 21-20 to win. Wow. Can you believe that? Yeah, I know. Uh, high school football uh, season, meantime, is back. Our game of the week is tonight. We're going to be heading to Granby Memorial High School. The Granby Canton Bears host the Rockville Rams. NBC Connecticut will be on site all afternoon to showcase the matchup. And the school community, of course, will have the highlights at sports at 11. And we'll announce four new games on Sunday. You know, from college to pro to high school, it's just really cool to see kind of like the opening, you know, storylines that kind of open up. We were talking about uh, tomorrow's game, right? Uh, you got to be watching the, the CU my in Nebraska. Uh, oh yeah, my youngest uh, goes to college yeah. in Colorado, and Deion Sanders has created quite a bit of excitement. He has, yeah. And they host Nebraska. Yeah, that's going to be good. Getting a ticket is impossible. That's what you said. There's like, a lot. Like, she couldn't get into the lottery, right? No, she's a freshman. She's yeah. a freshman. <laughs> Let's talk <laughs> about the weather real quick. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's going to be an interesting one because the high that the team has been on since beating TCU, and now they have to play Nebraska, that's no easy feat. So, um, in Bristol, they probably talk more about that game than they do here, right? <laughs> I could talk for hours about it, but I won't. Uh, we've got low clouds. See, we've got a little bit of cloudiness out there in uh, New Haven, a little bit of cloudiness in, uh, at Duncan Park, but it's fair. It's just wicked muggy yet again. Heat advisory continued for most of the state for today, uh, right through this evening. Then I think we'll get rid of it. I think our atmosphere will be cooling off. Now, there's a ton of moisture in the atmosphere. Really, I think all the way through next week. I don't think this humidity goes away, but the oppressive heat does. Yard goats. Last Friday night game of the season. 
They might be, I, I think this is overdone. I, there's a scattered shower storm is possible. They might delay tonight's game. Might have to delay it with temperatures in the 70s. No, I think it's gonna be in the 80s, but that's weird. I gotta check that map. I, I don't agree with what it's uh, thrown at us there. Uh, there's been a little bit of shower activity during the night, even in Western Connecticut. You see, there's already a couple showers or downpours here near Chesapeake Bay. And it's gonna be another day where there's a lot of thunderstorm activity out to the west of us, and some of it is going to try to sneak in here. The question in my mind is how much makes it in here and when. Uh, future radar, and we'll get updates on this. Uh, I'm not in total agreement with this, but I'll show you that skies do turn partly sunny. There's the chance this afternoon, once you get past 1 or 2 o'clock, of some showers and some thunderstorms. You can see how they're scattered about the area. Now, yesterday, these were just a couple hundred miles west of us. It looks like the best trigger still is out to our west, but we're going to throw these showers and storms in here. It's not a lot, but when it rains, it can pour, and there can be some gusty winds. And then as we go through the overnight, some low clouds and fog. Tomorrow, partly sunny with, again, a few showers or downpours around. Not a lot, just a little, which is good news for all the cyclists tomorrow, including Shannon Miller at the Closer to Free Ride. She's hoping she's closer to the finish line. than she. <laughs> Level two threat today. I, I think this is even maybe a little bit overdone. So there, if we get any storms to fire this afternoon, they could bring some damaging wind with them, and that would be about it. Notice the temperature trend is our friend. So we'll get rid of the oppressive heat, but we'll keep the humidity around for days. Only a slight improvement middle of next week. And there's your closer to free forecast. Shannon, the faster you ride, yeah. the drier. You will be. Ah, Here's okay. your 10-day forecast. Okay, a couple storms today. Best chance, I think, is west of Interstate 91, so between Hartford and the New York State border. As we go through the day, tomorrow and Sunday, scattered is the key phrase. Most of the time, it's, in air quotes, dry, but it's wicked humid with temperatures in the low to middle 80s. Next week, some scattered showers and storms, but we're going to be watching Lee very carefully. Uh, increasing surf next week, too, especially Rhode Island beaches. Back to you. Yeah, kind of an interesting one to watch, Bob. Thanks for that. All this month, NBC and Dublin, New Connecticut are supporting our schools. And we are helping teachers get the supplies that they need for their classrooms. Teachers like Mrs. Mazota at Pulaski Middle School in New Brighton. She needs $300 to buy notebooks and other materials for her young scientists. She says this year the science curriculum will involve a lot of exploration and investigation for her students. If you want to help her out, just scan that QR code there on your screen, or you can visit NBCConnecticut.com slash schools. Still ahead, getting your foot in the door or perhaps the sky, the job opportunities you can learn more about today at One Connecticut Airport.